Hello everyone. Today we are into our third series on trade unionism and trade unionists. And the lesson today deals with Indian-led trade unions in Guyana. Before I begin this lesson, I'd like to introduce you to the author or the authority on Indian-led trade unions. And his name is Dr. Nanda Kishore Gopal. Here is a picture of Dr. Nanda Gopal. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh -huh. Okay, I have, yes, Dr. Gopal. Who is Dr. Gopal? At the end of the lesson, I try to make it a lot clearer to you on Dr. Gopal. Uh, who is Dr. Gopal? Dr. Nanda Kashore was born on 19th August 1951 at Betafawakting. He is a former General Secretary and General President of NASI, and he holds the MPhil degree in Industrial Relations for the University of Glasgow and a PhD. Uh, he is now on one of the boards, public service boards. And so do is start with a general, in other words, start with Ashton Chase's book, A History of Trade Union, and then go to Nanda Kishore. So, it is that you have joined us this morning. As I said, the lesson for today is Indian-led trade unions in Guyana, and the first Indian-led trade union in Guyana was a by Mohammed Ayub Eden. For the students who live in Region 3, Mohammed Ayub Eden was born on the uh, West Demerara and he lived most of his life there. So it would be interesting if you attempt to do a research on Mohammed Ayub Eden. The other point I need to make is that if you are interested in the images, you can look at the Google slides and there you will find the images for the lesson that I am presenting today, right? So, by 1939, the registered trade unions in Guyana were the British Guyana Labor Union, on the 21st of July 1922, British Guyana Workers League, 28th of January 1931, Manpower Citizens Association, 5th of November 1937, the British Guyana Seamen's Union, the 16th of January 1938, the Transport Workers Union, which was uh, registered on the 23rd of March 1938, and just as an interjection, you will find, for instance, that Mr. Norris Witter, who is closely associated with Transport Workers Union, had been a president of the Guyana Trade Union Congress at some time. So you can do additional research on Mr. Witter. The British Guyana Post Office Workers Union was established on the 3rd of June, 1938. It's one of the unions in which women have played an important role but uh, it's important that we mention Andrew Jackson, who for several years had been the president of that union. But as I said, I'm quite impressed with the union because it acknowledges the role of women in the uh, trade union movement. Now, what I'm going to do at this point is take you over, <coughs> sorry, 
TQ tool of Mohammed Ayub Eden. Now, the Man P established the Man Power Citizens Association, and uh, he established it. It was registered, as I said, in 1938. Uh, the, uh, with the, he was able to establish that union with the assistance of Hubert Nathaniel Critchrow. His colleague, Charles Ramkinson Jacobs, also assisted in the organization of the union. So the Manpower Citizens Association was organized in 1936, but registered in 1937. Who was Mohammed Ayub Eden? Mohammed Ayub Eden was educated at primary school and at home, learning Hindi, Arabic, and Urdu. He became a village councillor in 1920 in the West Coast Demerara district. In 1927, he became secretary of the British Guyana East Indian Association. In 1928, he visited the UK and held talks at the colonial office and with Indian personalities and groups. One of the things that I noticed about uh, these trade unionists is that they were able to find time to contact their international uh, colleagues in the field. Eden was described as a certain trick. He was more into promoting this whole idea of the new worldwide order. For those of you who are studying the history of politics of Guyana, you will know that Dr. Chedi Jagan as well promoted the idea of the new world economic order right and in fact this is it, it is important that i mention that he had been associated with muhammad ayubidin and the manpower citizens association in the early period of its history now uh he wanted to promote this worldwide social order which would be led by the intelligentsia uh, Let's look at the first executive of the Manpower Citizens Association. The Manpower Citizens Association was registered on the 5th of November 1937. The first executive of the MPCA were Mr. Ayub Eden, President, and Mr. Harry Baron, General Secretary. The other officers were Edward Pyle, R.N. Prasad, J.R. Singh, T.R. King, O. Ashby, C. Mangal Maraj and O. N. Pasad. Miss Eleanor Sudin was the first female to be appointed vice president and later treasurer. Many of the members were Indian. In 1945, Shedi Jagan became the treasurer. After serving one year, he resigned over differences in policies. I'd like you to keep in your memory the name Eleanor Sudan because in the early period of trade unionism Indian women certainly did not hold senior positions like Eleanor but she she's a striking personality she was a village councillor and she had many firsts in her life so Eleanor Sudan is uh, somebody who you will find in the records but who for one reason or the other people do not actually uh, know very much about her. Up to 1938, the government and employees were still hostile to collective bargaining and there was no provision in the constitution for the workers to participate actively in the legislature and to be clearly represented. Although the MPCA did not have a branch at Lenora, the workers had called for Mr. Ayub Eden, president of the MPCA, to negotiate on their behalf. In 1939, the MPCA had a membership of 10,000 members, right? So it had become very popular among the uh, sugar workers. Uh, when the strike there was a strike at Lenora and uh, the workers at Lenora had called for Ayubidan and his uh, 
union to represent the party, to re sorry, represent the, uh, the Lenora strike. Now, they were willing to represent them, but the Sugar Producers Association refused to have them uh, enter the estate. The Plantation Administration refused to allow Eden and Jacob to enter the estate. The workers were told that Eden could have a meeting with them on the public road. Eden waited for the recognition from the Sugar Producers Association. Jacob subsequently informed the strikers that he will settle their dispute at a later date because he had to appear before the 1939 Moyne Commission. Jacob had always promoted negotiation and conciliation over the strike weapon. Students, what I'd like you to do is to do research on the 1939 Moyne Commission because that's one of the areas that's going to come up in your examination, okay? So it's important that you do that. But what's also uh, important is that you look at the hostility of the plantocracy and the business elite to the emergence of trade unions in Guyana. The MPCA participated in the 1947 elections. They had nominated seven candidates to contest the 14th seat in the Legislative Council. The British Guyana Labour Party, which was headed by Hubert Nathaniel Kutcho, won six seats. The MPCA lost, basically lost because uh, none of their candidates won. This was an unmitigated disaster for the union and set about the decline of the union. It's important that I mention as well that the MPCA is now defunct hmm? uh, so that it certainly one must extend kudos to the British Guyana Labour Union, the first labour union in Guyana, which continues to exist. The next president of the one of the presidents of the MPCA in 1953 was Lionel Loku. He eventually established his own union. He was a lawyer. Uh, he later became an evangelist and he established his own political party, the National Democratic Party. He was also High Commissioner, Guyana's and, and Barbados High Commissioner to London, France, and I think, and some other country in Europe. When Mr. Rupert Tello succeeded him in 1955 as head of the MPCA, he was the person who moved for Labor Day to be made a statutory holiday. So it's important that we mention while Rupertello is not Indian, it's important that we mention that the MPCA certainly played a significant role in having the Labor Day Parade created as a national holiday. But the person who we need to pay attention to in the MPCA, other than Mohammed Ayub Eden, is of course Richard Ishmael. For those of you in the class today and you are attending Richard Ishmael Secondary, Richard Ishmael Secondary was established by Richard Ishmael and he was the one who uh, when he established that school he had called it the Indian Educational Trust College but after 1976 when education was made free from nursery to university, uh, the school was renamed the Richard Ishmael Secondary School. So that while Mohammed Eden is basically lost the memory, unless you are a serious researcher of labor history, Richard Ishmael, the name Richard Ishmael, lives on in his contribution to education. Richard Ishmael was a trade unionist, he was a hotelier and of course as i said he was an educator his hotel belvedere was on camps was situated on camp street and that is two blocks sorry uh, yes it's like 
very close to the St. Margaret's Primary School. Uh, it's now, uh, the, well, it was removed, but you have that space there for uh, whatever you need to do with it. His colleagues included Cecil Cambridge, Joseph Polydor, and Andrew Jackson. Mr. Richard Ishmael was president of the MPCA when he went to the USA and Canada in 1958 on the first scholarship for a local trade unionist sponsored by the ICA. And you'd find that information in Ashton Chase's work, History of Trade Unionism, at page 252. Richard Ishmael was a graduate of an American university. And at the time when he returned to Guyana, there was concern, wide concern, over the certificates of graduates of American colleges and universities. Hence, Richard Ishmael was not appointed as a teacher uh, because of his American qualifications. Hence, he established the Indian Educational Trust College, and this school was renamed the Richard Ishmael Secondary after 1975. As I said, Richard Ishmael was also <clears throat> a hotelier and he had owned the he had owned the Belvedere uh, Hotel which is uh, in which was in Camp Street, but it was eventually demolished and it's an open space right now. You're not gonna find it there. Let's look at the achievements of Richard Ishmael. The president of the MPCA, Richard Ishmael had also served as the president of the Guyana Trade Union Congress. By April 1955, a large number of organized trade unions was unaffiliated to the Trade Union Council. These included the government employee unions, the Guyana Industrial Workers Union, the British Guyana Labor Union, the Municipal the Trade Union, and the Sawmill Workers Union. A dispute arose as a consequence of the refusal of the TUC to accept any trade union which was affiliated to the Caribbean Labor Congress or the World Federation of Trade Unions. These were considered communist organizations. The interim government was accused of instigating the expulsion of the red unions from the TUC. So that the main reason that you need to give for the unions refusing to assign, uh, be affiliated to the TUC was political. It was a period in which there was great hostility to communism and it was assumed that the People's Progressive Party was uh, a communist-led government Okay, at, the time, at, the, at, the, at that time. So they were not associated with the MPCA. The, how, did the, how did the Trade Union Council survive during that period as well as the Manpower Systems Association? They received funding from different sources and with the assistance of this funding, they were able to one, establish the first major housing scheme that is Tocqueville in South Georgetown as a pilot project. This project was conceptualized and executed under the TUC's leadership of Richard Ishmael as president. Secondly, in acquisition of these houses, the TUC was able to negotiate with the American Federation for Labor and Congress of Industrial Organizations for money to be acquired from the pension funds for workers in the United States to be used to fund the project. Finally, the Guyana Industrial Training Center was established. I think I, in one of my presentation, I referred to the GITC as the Guyana Industrial Training Institute. It is the Guyana Industrial Training Center. And the Government Technical Institute is further down the road from the Guyana Industrial Training Center. They are both situated in Wolford Avenue, which is in Georgetown, okay? But the Guyana Industrial Training Center got assistance and tech, financial as well as technical assistance from the American Institute of Free Labor Development to commence a training program. And they, 
American Institute of Free Labor Development in turn sought help from the U.S. aid program which provided a grant to sufficient con sufficiently construct the facility and to operate it for three years and that facility was of course the Guyana Industrial Training Center. Please bear in mind it is a Guyana Industrial Training Center and it is not the Guyana Industrial Training Institute. What you do have is the Government Technical Institute which is down the road in Wolford Avenue as well. It's also in Wolford Avenue and it is uh, the abode situated there. I think I should also mention that Richard Ishmael Secondary is also situated in Wolford Avenue. Okay, so these are the products of uh, Richard Ishmael, and he certainly did an uh, excellent job in the sense that his name continues in the in the GITC, the as well as the Richard Ishmael Secondary School. Let's look at the decline of the MPCA and the rise of the Ghana Industrial Workers Union and GAO. The Ghana Industrial Workers Union was established on 10th March 1946. It was registered on the 5th of April 1948 as the 49th Union. The founders were Dr. J.P. Lachman Singh and Mr. Amos Rangela. After the 1947 election, Dr. J.P. Lashman Singh and Dr. Chedi Jagan led the Guyana Industrial Workers Union, uh, that's GIW. The main objective was to weaken the control of the MPCA in the Sugar Belt because of the patronage of the Sugar Producers Association. The poor showing of the MPCA at the 1947 election contributed to its loss of stature on the sugar plantations. There was a paradigm shift with the rise of the Guyana Industrial Workers Union. The new union did its best work among women and one of the active members of the Guyana Industrial Workers Union was the late Jane Phillips Gay. She and her brother were very active in the union and she was also active in the domestic workers union. In fact, it is because of her involvement in the trade union that, the, that contributed to the success of the PPP in 1953. In April 1948, the Guyana Industrial Workers Union is registered with the intention of replacing the MPCA as a major union for field and factory workers. Sugar workers had become disillusioned with the MPCA, which offered little resistance to the Sugar Producers Association. MPCA, you will see that while the leadership did not support the People's Progressive Party, the uh, rank and file members, they supported the party who supported the uh, 1953 uh, PPP in office. Please bear in mind that you can find the images on your Google Slides and uh, that will be able to keep bare the whole idea of the Indian-led government. The Guyana Agricultural Workers Union was founded in 1946 as the Guyana Industrial Workers Union. 
After failing in the 1950s, it was reformed as the Guyana Sugar Workers Union in 1961, but changed its name to Guyana Cultural Workers Union in 1962, before becoming GAU with later that day. The president of the union was Mr. Harry Lal. He led the struggle for recognition in place of the MPCA in 1964. Now, on the 26th of February, 2020, Gao celebrated 44 years of existence. I'd like us now to look at Kumal Chan, uh, a veteran trade unionist and president of the Ghana Agricultural Workers Union. Mr. Kamal Chan was also a mechanic by trade and a farmer on the west bank of Demerara. Kamal Chan had been a PPPC member of parliament since 1922. In the 10th parliament, he had responsibility for region three, uh, West Demerara and the Esquibo Islands. Kamal Chan was also called Comrade Kumal and he had joined the GAU in 1975 as the union's organizing secretary. At that time, the almost three decades struggle for the GAU's recognition on behalf of the field and factory workers in the sugar industry reached a high point. It was on All Year's Day 1975 that a poll was held and at which the GAU wrongly defeated the incumbent MPCA to become the bargaining agent of the thousands of sugar workers who toiled in the fields and factories of the sugar estates. He was among those who, on February 26, 1976, appended the recognition and the avoidance and settlement of disputes agreement with the then Sugar Producers Association, which was the forerunner to Gaisuko. Diana Sugar Workers Association, um, no uh, organization, sorry. We've come this morning to our lesson, lesson on the trade unionism and the trade unionists. Of course, we have not mentioned all of the Indian-led trade unionists, nor have we mentioned all of the Indian-based uh, trade unions. But as I said, you will be able